We were greeted by the bad news. Wow, that is really amazing. We actually gave up halfway through the hike and there are mixtures of monastery, churches and chapels. This is the cheapest mineral water that I bought in my whole life. And we may have found the most comfortable restaurant in the area. The pilot brought the hot air balloon very near to our hotel. Today is the start of our epic trip around Europe and we will be first flying to Turkey where we'll spend a few days before hopping around the various countries. In total, we will be covering 13 countries over the course of 2 months. Our very first activity of our journey is one of our bucket lists, so stay tuned. We will see you when we get there. A very good morning from Cappadocia, Turkey. So yesterday night, we spent almost an entire 24 hours traveling. So because of the one hour delay of our Singapore to Istanbul flight, we missed our connecting flight. The airline staff at Singapore Changi Airport mentioned that the reschedule of the flight is actually free of charge. So after we realized that gate was closed, we were told to go to this transfer desk. We went to two such transfer desks. So the first one was actually only for domestic flight transfer. So for us, we need to go all the way up to their ticketing sales office. And that was when we were greeted by the bad news that since we booked two of the flights separately, it was not a connecting flight. And so even though it is of the same Turkish airline brand, they weren't able to reschedule for us for free. So there was a charge. At that point in time, it was already very late and because we need to arrive at Cappadocia by yesterday night, we had no choice but to pay the additional fees. So we initially thought this additional fee is just for the fees to change the ticket. But as it turns out, their economy seats are fully booked. So we ended up paying for business class and that costed us about 390 sing dollars and this is the first time we bought a business class ticket yeah although it's not really that kind of a business class because it's a short flight and the plane was pretty small but still yeah it's our first time sitting business class so a tip is if you are ever buying a connecting flight on the same day to purchase them together we didn't do so because Cappadocia wasn't kind of in our initial plan, that's why we booked our tickets separately. So yeah, a bit of a waste of money. Yeah, and since we already bought the business class ticket, we went to the Turkish airline lounge. The lounge wasn't really a very big lounge and it didn't really have a lot of items, but still, yeah, it is something that we have already paid for. So after we alighted from our flight at Kayseri, we thought everything would be smooth sailing, but when we arrived at the airport, we were waiting for our luggages and what happened is that they actually split the luggages into two different areas. If your luggage originate from an international country, they actually split your luggage out into a different area. And the reason why is because they wanted to scan your luggages before you exit the departure area. But there wasn't really clear sign. We ended up waiting and we realized that our luggages was not on the conveyor belt. So we asked the staff there and we had to go to the other area. So yeah, after we got our luggages, Thankfully, the airport transfer was pretty good. The driver was already there waiting for us and it was a one hour ride from the airport to Cappadocia. And by the time we arrived at Cappadocia, it's already 11.30 p.m. We quickly unpacked our luggage, showered and slept. The next morning, which is today, we wake up at 3.30 a.m. to check an activity of our bucket list and that is to Right, the hot air balloon. The experience was pretty good. At around 4 a.m., a van came to pick us up and drove us straight to the area where the hot air balloon would lift off. And we were lucky also in a sense that we were the first few hot air balloon to hit the skies. And our hot air balloon stayed all the way while the rest of the hot air balloon slowly get lifted up. So we got to see the hot air balloons while they are all on the ground and we get to see them in mid-air as well. 
and based on the pilot, I'm uh, not really sure whether it's true, <laughs> he mentioned that we went 1.2 km up into the sky, which is much higher than the usual limit, which is 750 meters to 1 km. Not sure whether it's true or not, but the view was amazing. We were really very lucky that we got to see the sunrise together with all the hot air balloons. It was the iconic view. If you search for Cappadocia on Google, you will definitely see the iconic sunrise and the hot air balloon and we saw exactly that. Yes. Overall, the hot air balloon takeoff and the landing was pretty smooth. Yeah, the landing was slightly bumpy but it wasn't that kind of a dangerous bumpy and all throughout the hot air balloon it was smooth. I expected it to have a little bit of turbulence or a little bit of shakiness but there wasn't any. Yeah, it was very very smooth. It was just like you're standing on an observatory deck. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was a once-in-a-lifetime epic experience. Yes. In Cappadocia, there are different areas that provide hot air balloon service. And the area that has the most hot air balloon in the sky at the same time is at Jerome National Park. And according to the pilot, today there are 150 balloons in the sky. Mm, it was an awesome sight. Yes. So if you ever want to do a hot air balloon and you're thinking of where to do it, I think Cappadocia is the best place to do it. And Jerome, definitely need to pick Jerome. Yeah, the other takeoff location I think is at Cat Valley. We're not sure how good it is, but the Cat Valley prices are slightly cheaper than the one at the Jerome National Park. So considering that it's slightly cheaper, I guess the view is not as good as Jerome, but we are not sure. After the ride, then I realized why people will say that the hot air balloon ride is a very romantic ride. Yeah, it is definitely a very romantic ride because the landscape and all the hot air balloons, wow. It's really amazing. Yeah, they are very colourful as well. All the 150 hot air balloons are of different colours. So it, it's really, uh, it's really pretty. And we are very lucky that we got the compartment all by ourselves, which is also a luxury. And the pilot is very kind. He let us try to navigate the hot air balloon. So Bonnie got to squeeze the handle a few times and you, it sprays out the, the flames. It is also once in a lifetime experience. I don't think a lot of pilots will allow you to do so. <laughs> it was quite fun. <laughs> That's all about our hot air balloon ride and also our long journey from Singapore to Cappadocia. Later, we will be exploring more of the attractions in Cappadocia. Yep, we will see you when we get there. Bye bye! And after a brief rest at our hotel, we are now outside. It is about 3.30 p.m. now and the sun is scorching hot. And here we are at the beginning of the hiking trail of Rose Valley. And we are about to do the Rose Valley and the Red Valley hike. And this will probably take us about four hours. So hopefully we <laughs> don't get a heat stroke. We are all prepared and we have a mini fan. And we even have a free guide over there. Yeah, this dog has been following us for the past 15 minutes and is waiting for us to continue the hike. So some facts about Cappadocia. About 10 million years ago, several volcanoes erupted in the region, covering the present-day Cappadocia with lava. This formed a layer of 150 meters of volcanic tuff. And with the coal, the layer slowly cracked and then the rain and the wind sculpted them into the present-day cliffs that we see. It's also called the fairy chimneys. This chimney were actually dug out by men and were used as dwelling, churches and pantry. This chimney actually works as a natural air conditioning. So in the indoor, it will be warmer in the winter and it will be always be cool in the summer. Hopefully, when we visit some of the churches later, it will be much cooler than what we are experiencing now. One thing that I observed during our 40 minutes walk, there isn't any hiker here. So everyone either come by a car or come by a ATV. So hopefully we can survive this four hours trail. Yeah, so if you are here and you're doing it in the afternoon, opt for either a tour or the ATV, I think it's much better because the first 40 minutes, there's actually nothing to see. So hopefully when we are hiking, there's much more scenic views. And cooler. Yeah, hopefully the cliffs actually block out the sunlight. So yeah, we will see you when we get there. Bye bye. Our guide need to work now. So 
we actually gave up halfway through the hike. It was too hot for us to carry on and we didn't really prepare a lot of water. So we decided to backtrack and backing track also meant 45 minutes walk back to the main area of Koreme. We were glad that we backtracked and now we are considering to go for either the red tour or the green tour which offers transportation to the site itself. Yeah. We will also be exploring a small part of the town where the Dark Church is so that is more walkable in such a weather. It's summer and it's really hot. There isn't any shade anywhere. So right now we are at a restaurant called Vibek and it allegedly serves the most traditional pottery kebab. We have ordered their chicken version to try and they have served up with a lot of side dishes. Why did we order the pottery kebab? It's because the pottery kebab is a specialty of Cappadocia. So when you are here, you have to try it. And we have also ordered their grilled chicken. So while we wait for the food, we will start on with the appetizer first. We have a side of pickles, salad, cabbage, green chili, red chili and bread. All of our food has arrived. This is the pottery kebab, which just now the staff did a performance to um, not to knock on the pottery so that the food inside can be poured out from the pottery. Now I'm going to taste the pottery kebab. It's very very hot. It is very strong in tomato taste. It's tomato sauce plus the chicken and some the green pepper. So the pottery kebab also served with a plate of rice. Yesterday we tried the rice on the plate and it tastes a bit saltish and it's not the rice that we usually eat. Let's see whether is it the same kind of rice. This rice is different from the Turkish Airways rice, so it has a harder texture. Really good. I've ordered a grilled chicken ribs. It looks like it has a lot. And it's served with a mashed potato at the bottom and a few cauliflowers. And I think this is... Let's see what this is. I'm pretty sure it's sweet potato and not carrot. Although it looks like a carrot. I think it might be carrot. Now on to the main thing, which is the grilled chicken ribs. The chicken is actually marinated very well. It is slightly sourish, maybe because of there's some tomato inside and slightly spicy. Like it's only a hint of aftertaste I see so it's quite a unique flavor. The chicken itself is very tender and it's, it's not bad. Let me try the pottery kebab. So the pottery kebab actually needs to cook for four hours. So before you come to this restaurant, by right, you need to order it in advance. Even though we made our reservation at 7 and we come at 5 p.m., they still allow us to come in and they serve us the pottery kebab. So I'm not really sure whether is it true that you really need to wait for 4 hours, but they cook it for 4 hours. So maybe they have one already prepared. Anyway, taste test for the pottery chicken kebab. I was expecting it to be a little bit charred, but it's not kind of like a diced chicken with tomato and with a lot of other spices as well. So we shall finish our dinner and we'll head back to the hotel for a much deserved rest. Today we start our day at the Goreme Open Air Museum. Within this area, there is 14 different points of interest and there are mixtures of monasteries, churches and chapels. Other than the 14 monasteries and churches, you can also see a very beautiful scenery of Cappadocia. It's very, very scenic. Based on our experience, the landscape of Cappadocia can be viewed from Hotel Balloon, the hiking trail, and another one of it is from here, the Open Air Museum. All three of them give you a different feeling of Cappadocia. It's very, very beautiful. So, you know now it's summer and the weather in Cappadocia is really very very hot. Just now we were at the Goreme National Park and we walked 30 minutes all the way back to the main tourist area of Goreme and we may have found the most comfortable restaurant in the area. Their restaurant is probably the only one that has air conditioner. We tried walking through the whole street trying to find another restaurant which has aircon. None of them has aircon. So if you are looking for air conditioner comfort, this is the restaurant to be at. We have ordered their grilled meatball as well as a spicy kebab. So our food has arrived. Time for the taste test of this spicy kebab. You can see that there are some red chili party inside. It should be quite spicy. The kebab is actually very nicely grilled. It has a very crispy exterior but it is still juicy. So it managed to maintain the juice even though it has been grilled for quite some time because it's very crispy. 
Not bad. It seems that they serve it with quinoa, healthier version of rice. It's not bad. It has the taste of the vanilla, very flavorful rice. Right? Definitely better than the one we had on Turkish Airlines. So Bonnie ordered their grilled meatball. The meat looks the same, but I guess it's not spicy because it doesn't come with the chili party. Let me taste this. Wow, it actually tastes different. This is quite saltish, but it's actually very flavorful. I think it has a lot of various spices inside, which is not present in this one. So the taste of this two is very different. Although the meat texture is the same, it's also juicy, and the exterior is also a little bit crispy, a little bit charred. I'm quite surprised that it tastes different. I thought they would taste the same, but the spices in the meatballs and the spices in this spicy kebab is different. It's not just that they just add chili for the spicy kebab. Definitely come to this restaurant. This is the only restaurant in Gorome that has aircon. We check every single restaurant. We saw a Burger King here. Seems like it's just recently opened and it doesn't have aircon. Like it has aircon installed but it's not turned on. So maybe they are just used to the weather here but for us this is like heaven. Yeah, so do come here if you are at Gorome. They sell good food and it's a very comfortable restaurant. So in total, we have spent two full days here at Goreme and here are some tips for you if you are planning to come here. The very first tip is that if you are visiting Turkey, Turkey uses Turkish Lira and the exchange rate in your home country may not be as good as the exchange rate in Turkey itself. So for example, in Singapore, the exchange rate of Turkish Lira to Singapore dollars is 1 Turkish Lira to 7 cent but the exchange rate here is actually 5 cents. And how we did it is that upon arrival at the airport, we actually used one of the ATM to do a cash withdrawal. There's many ATMs around, so do find the one that has the lowest fee. The one that we had actually charges us 120 Turkish Lira for each withdrawal and has a cap of 4,000 Lira per withdrawal. So including the fees, the exchange rate is still better. And don't worry about ATMs because there's a lot of ATMs here in Goreme at the main tourist up next to the bus station there's a lot of ATM and even just now when we were visiting the Goreme open air museum outside the museum there's also ATM so don't really need to worry about not having any ATM around. The other thing is that if you are here at Cappadocia, you have to go up to the hot air balloon. So one of the most memorable things we did in the two days here is to go up the hot air balloon and really it is just beyond our expectation. Like I mentioned, I initially thought it would be very shaky, a lot of turbulence but it is really very smooth. It's like standing on an observatory that is rotating and moving. Definitely a major plus because you can get to see the various hot air balloons, you can get to see the scenic view of Cappadocia and you can get to see the sunrise. It's really a once in a lifetime opportunity. So if you're ever coming here to Cappadocia, don't miss it out. People might say that you can actually view the hot air balloon at the various observatory deck or as well as in your hotel itself. But being up there is totally different from watching it as it flows up to the sky. Yes, it's a totally different feeling. Yeah, both are good though. Mm. But the thing is that being in the hot air balloon is way better. It's a very unique experience. Yeah. So this morning during the sunrise, we actually went up to our hotel's balcony and we saw a very nice view as well. The hot air balloon is really really huge because the pilot of the hot air balloon actually brought the hot air balloon very near to our hotel. It's really a very scenic view. Hundreds of balloons in the sky at sunrise is really epic. Very, yeah. yeah, it's so far the best sunrise that I ever have. So this comes with another tip is that if you are booking a hotel here at Cappadocia, try to book one that has the hot air balloon view. Then you do not need to compete with people in the various observatory deck because right where we are at our hotel balcony, we can actually see one of the viewing deck and it's really quite crowded in the morning. And so having the comfort of waking up and just going up to your hotel rooftop or balcony to actually catch the glimpse of the hot air balloon is a major plus. It's a total a plus point, yes. Yeah, if not, you imagine you have to wake up at around 5 a.m., you have to hike to the observatory deck, and then after that, you have to compete with people to take photographs. Uh, it's not that if you want this view, you need to pay a higher price because there's actually quite a lot of hotels that have the view. And here we are at the historical Gourmet. It's actually quite a good hotel and it's pretty affordable as well. Uh, it has a very nice view in the morning, as you will see in our video. And the staff is very, very friendly. Yep, very good. Another thing that we realized in Cappadocia is that the tour price 
is relatively cheaper if you buy in the Goreme town compared to those booking website. Additionally, you can actually bargain with the tour agency. The cheapest that we got for the green tour is 50 euro and their usual price is 65 euro. Uh, it's quite a shame that we didn't join the tour but yeah, if you are interested to join any tour in Cappadocia, you can consider to book when you reach Goreme town. There are plenty of slots so don't need to worry about that. Another thing about Goreme city that I like a lot is that even though it's a very touristy town but the grocery price is not very expensive. This is the cheapest mineral water that I bought in my whole life. So we got like 375 Turkish Lira for a 1.5 liters water. It's very very cheap. Yeah and if you are visiting during summer you need a lot of water. So if you are doing any of the hike, the Red Valley, the Rose Valley or the Love Valley hike and if you are doing it in the afternoon, do bring plenty of water with you or do drink plenty of water on the way because the weather is really very hot and the sun is scorching. Yes. Yeah. If you are here and you can choose to do the hike in the morning, do it in the morning or do the hike towards the late evening. We gave up our hike along the way because we started at around 2 p.m. and it's really very hot and we didn't bring water with us. So yeah, we can't stress enough the importance of bringing water as well as the hike. If you really want to do it, please get some form of transportation to the start of the trail because if you walk from Gorome town, especially during summer, <laughs> It is very exhausting. Even for today, we actually walk from the main area of Gorome all the way to the Open Air Museum. It's also quite exhausting already. And because it's an Open Air Museum, there's not much shelter except for the caves themselves. So do be prepared. We often joke about this sky here. The sky is very blue. We only see like one speck of cloud. Yeah, the whole sky is just all the way blue and there's not much cloud. Like, no chance of yeah. raining. If you can actually see three speck of clouds, you really consider lucky. So right now here, there's only one speck of cloud. So some other facts about the Goreme Open Air Museum. So this museum is a must visit spot when you're here in Goreme. And the reason why is because it is easily accessible and you can get to see a lot of the cave churches. So if you are spending just a few days here in Goreme and you are deciding which church to visit, just go to the Open Air Museum. They have probably a few best cave churches you can view. There's over 600 cave churches here at Cappadocia and really there's a lot. If you don't have time to do the hikes which takes about 3 to 4 hours, you can just go to the Open Air Museum. There's about 14 points of interest there and it's more than enough for you to experience what a cave church looks like. So highly recommended. The entrance ticket into the Open Air Museum itself is 300 Turkish Lira and the Dark Church within the Open Air Museum costs an additional 100 Turkish Lira and the Dark Church is well worth the price because the paintings within the Dark Church is very well maintained. The other one that has very nice painting is the Buckle Church and this church is not within the Open Air Museum, it's actually outside of the Open Air Museum. We are not sure whether it's because they are in the process of restoring it but we don't actually need a ticket to access the Buckle Church. That is probably the second best because the paintings within the church is in vivid colours. Uh, unfortunately, we are not able to record those paintings into mm. our video because photography and videography are not allowed inside the churches. If you really want to see it now, you can still Google the images but it's not as good as you seeing it in person. The paintings are really very amazing that I couldn't imagine it has been drawn 1000 plus years ago. Mm. They are all very detailed. So two recommendations if you are visiting Goreme, take the hot air balloon, visit the open air museum. And book a hotel with the hot air balloon view. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so these are the three most memorable things in our two days spent here. So thank you for joining us on our Cappadocia Goreme tour and we will see you in our next video. Bye! One of the staff here just subscribe to our channel and lemonade that costs two hundred sing dollars.